What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the Dabson DBS 1400 Pro. Taking a look at some of the specs, this has a 1,382 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 2,400 watt power handling with a peak of 4,800 watts, a 1,200 watt solar charging input, and a very good five year warranty. So besides the main unit, I also have an expansion battery and this is model DBS2100B. This has a 2,150 watt hour capacity. So both of these combined give you a total capacity of 3,532 watt hours. So taking a look at the power station itself, this is definitely a nice and modern looking power station. It's mostly all black, but then you also have some silver accents here at the side as well. The outside is made of mostly plastic, but it is a very durable and thick feeling plastic. And inside of this, you also have a reinforced aluminum alloy structure. So overall, it should be a pretty strong power station. As you can see here on the top, you also have two handles, which make it easier to carry. So taking a look at your ports right over here, you have three USB-A ports and two of these are fast charge ports. Next to that, you have three USB-C ports. The bottom two are 100 watts and the top one is 30 watts. I've reviewed many power stations at this point and this is the first one that I've seen that actually has three USB-C ports with two of them being 100 watts. So many things I have charge over USB-C, so I definitely like having that. Coming over to this side, you have your cigarette lighter port and this does a max of 10 amps. You have two DC output ports down here, which do a max of four amps. Here in the middle, you have a light bar and this has a few different modes on it. I'm not sure if it'll show well on camera, but this is more of a amber light compared to the usual white LED you get on most power stations. This is gonna be a lot more pleasant to use as a night light or to light up a room and not have it blinding you the entire time. Coming over to the right side, you have three AC outlets. And as I said earlier, this can put out a max of 2,400 watts. Right down here, you have your 30 amp output. And then over here, you have your parallel port in case you wanna link two of these units together. Coming over to the other side, this is where you have most of your inputs. First off, you have a AC charging speed switch and this can switch between slow and fast charging. I definitely like having that because yes, you can change the charging speed on a lot of power stations, but typically you gotta go through the app and it's just a whole process. This one, you can just plop it down, plug it in, and right here, very quickly, change if you want it to charge at a lower wattage or a higher wattage. Right next to that, you have your solar slash car charging input, your AC charging input, your overload protection switch, and last but not least, you also have an ethernet port, and I'm assuming that's for them to analyze and update the power station at the factory. And right down here, you have two extra battery ports as you can hook up a total of two expansion batteries to this power station. Taking a look at the ports on the expansion battery, you have two fast charge USB-A ports, and then you also have two 100 watt USB-C ports. I've also tested quite a few expansion batteries, and this is the first time I've seen an expansion battery actually offer decent charging. Some of them have USB-A, but as we all know, that's pretty slow. This, you have two 100 watt USB-C ports, so you can easily charge your laptop, Steam Deck, or any other high power devices as well. So definitely good to have that as this allows you to take just the expansion battery and use this as a very large portable power bank. All right, so here's the power station and the expansion battery side by side. As you can see, they're pretty much identical. They also have the same width and size, except this one's just a little bit shorter. These are stackable, so normally you would have this one on top of this one, but right now I have it on this table and I don't have that much confidence in it. So instead I just put them side by side like this. When it comes to buying a large power station, especially around 3000 watt hours and up, I definitely prefer to have a separate configuration like this versus one larger unit. This gives you a lot more flexibility. If you don't need that much power, you can just take this one by itself. And then if you need to do something that requires more power, you can take them both. When it comes to transporting, you don't have a much larger unit to carry around. You just carry that one and then this one, which again makes it easier. So when it comes to expansion, this is a very flexible setup. As I said earlier, on its own, this has 1,382 watt hours. And then with this one, this bumps it up to 3,532 watt hours. But beyond this, you can also expand this much more as well. So with each DBS 1400 Pro unit, you can add two expansion batteries. 
And then if you want to expand it even more, you can add another unit and another two batteries as well for a total of two main units and four expansion batteries. And this will give you a very large 11,364 watt hours. So regardless, if you need a smaller setup or something much larger, you can do that with this power station. Besides capacity, having two of these linked together will also bump your power handling up to 4,600 watts. And if you are someone who wants to get a very large whole home backup solution, you can always just buy one unit like this, buy this one when you have a chance, buy another battery when you get a chance again, and kind of just keep doing that and grow as you go. So this way you don't have a big lump sum to pay up front and you could just grow your setup as your finances allow you. As I said earlier, both run on a LifePo4 battery and are rated to maintain a 80% capacity for 4,500 charges. That's more than 15 years of usage you'll get from these units. Most power stations only have a rating of about 3,000 to 3,500 cycles on average. So this is definitely much better than most power stations out there. When it comes to charging, this has a 1800 watt AC input, which can charge from zero to 80 in only 42 minutes. So definitely a very quick charging speed. When it comes to solar, this can take 1200 watts of solar. But a cool thing about this setup is the expansion battery can also charge on its own with solar as well. This also has a 1200 watt solar charging input. So if you connect both of these to solar, you can charge this very fast with a total of 2,400 watts. All right, so I drained the power station and the expansion battery from 100% to zero using about a 1,500 watt load, and they put out a total of 3,023 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this combination a usable capacity of 85.5%, most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average, so this is right there on par with most other units. All right, let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this. As I said earlier, this is rated to do 2400 watts with a peak of 4800 watts. I'm not gonna bother with everyday tech, even if you use every single USB port right here, that'll still be under 300 watts, which is nothing for this power station. Most regular household outlets only run 15 amps at the most, which converts to about 1800 watts. So any item that you have in your house that plugs into a regular outlet, this power station is going to be able to handle that, whether that be a electric heater, air conditioner, oven, microwave, hair dryer, or once again, anything else that runs on a regular outlet. So right here, I have an electric heater. Let's go ahead and plug this in at the highest setting. I think this draws about 1300 Watts. Let me move this away so it doesn't get the power station too hot, but it looks like on low mode it's drawing about 900 Watts. Bump that up to medium. Now drawing about 1400 watts, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna drop down below that in a second. And there we go, about 1200 watts. Now on the highest mode, and it looks like that's doing about 1300 watts. All right, so I went out to my garage and grabbed a second identical heater. With both of these on, this should put it a little bit over its maximum power handling. So we got the first one on. Let me go ahead and let that one settle down to its 1300 watt power. I am gonna absolutely roast right now with both of these heaters pointing at me, but gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. All right, so settled about a little under 1400 watts. Let me start this one on low. Putting out 2700 watts for a second. Now it's down to a little under 2400 watts. All right, starting to settle down, about 2100 watts. Let's bump it up to medium. And as you can see, we are running well over its rated power. It's only rated to put out 2400 watts and it's putting out a little more than 2600 watts. Let's go ahead and put the heater at max as well. And we are running that 2400 watt limit, no problem. And we're actually slightly under that. So it's been about three minutes now and it's still running that 2400 watt load. So it is working as advertised. As I said earlier, these pull about 1300 to 1350 watts each. So combined, they should be running about 2700 watts. But this actually has what they call power boost mode. And basically this allows you to run higher powered appliances at a lower wattage. So if it's a resistive item like a heater, microwave, electric cooking device, hair dryer, something like that, it'll let you run that item on this power station at a lower wattage where another power station would just give up and shut off. So 
Always cool to have that feature. Yes, you're gonna get a little less heat from these heaters, but you're gonna be able to run more than you normally would on a power station of this size. Going at a little under five minutes now and it's still running that same load, no problem at all. And one thing I just noticed is this is definitely a very quiet power station as well. There is some air moving, but the fan inside is very quiet. The fan noise you hear is most likely coming from these two heaters. I went closer to this heater and this is definitely a very quiet unit. I've used a lot of cheaper power stations that just pump out so much air. And a lot of times it isn't the actual air moving that's the problem, but the fan actually having somewhat of a whine and that just makes it very hard to use the power station in the same room. But right now I'm only about two feet away from this and I can barely hear the fan at all. So when it comes to the inverter, this can definitely do the power that it's advertised to do, plus a little more as well. I totally forgot to mention it, but to connect these two batteries together, you have this small cable here. Turn off both units, connect that to the port on this one, then connect that to the port on this one. Then it's just plug and play. One thing to note is these are meant to be stacked on top of each other, as this one has the port right here, and this one has the port right here. This way when they're stacked up, it'll be plugged in like that. If you want to have them side by side like this, you would have to flip this battery around. This way the ports are both right here on the same side. So I know a lot of people get nervous when it comes to storing large batteries like this in their house. But rest assured you don't have anything to worry about as this does have an advanced BMS. This continuously monitors and protects the power station from over voltage, short circuits, temperatures and many other things as well. Overall, this is definitely a solid power station. It performs well, it has a good usable capacity, and best of all, it's also very affordable as well. So overall, if you happen to be shopping for a mid to large size power station, I would definitely recommend this one here, which again is the DBS 1400 Pro. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.